Hello YouTube, this is Mr. Yams here with the second tutorial in the how to build an email setting keylogger uh, series. And this tutorial will be making a way to be able to capture the state of a keystroke. After this, it'll be pretty straightforward. We just have to use that mail sending library to then send the keystrokes into and format them into an HTML document that we can send as an email. So let's get started. Alright, so we're going to create a key storage class and it's just going to have a couple things. Uh, might as well just throw it in the handler package just because it feels right. Uh, the key storage class is going to hold an integer for the key code. For instance, if you press the A key, we might want to save the value 65, or actually I think that's E. Uh, we're going to want to know if the key was pressed, so we have a boolean and uh, we're going to want to know the time that we pressed it and this is important because we want to know if the user has actually pressed the shift key and if they have pressed other keys in within that time then we know to capitalize them or to give them an alternate value later on when we're making a way to turn the key code back into text and we can just oh, use a two string method just so we can easily debug this class if you want to see what's inside it or something we could just print it uh, that's essentially all this class is going to be. All the fields are going to be encapsulated. It's just kind of a constructor and some getters. And the overridden two string. Uh, you can see that this class is pretty much done. Now we just need to start to incorporate it in with the uh, native keyboard because that will have our list of keystrokes. We just need to create that. like it's all ready to go, ready to be used. So we just need to hop into the other package and uh, actually curate the list. It's going to be private just because this is the only class that needs access to this data. And of course our generic type arguments are key storage and we're going to call this cache just because it's going to cache all of the uh, strokes and create an array list. Maybe we'll want to sort these by time later. And we're also going to need for later on a start or a send method and a um, on fail method and these will be called whenever we attempt to send all of our keystroke data it might not always go through because of various problems that we'll explain later but we can just have those set up right now they'll be used in the manage service class but for now we can just use our list call the add method and add in our new keystrokes whenever we press whenever we press them So we're going to get the key code from that key event, and it's going to be true because obviously we are pressing the key. And system.currentTimeMillies just means it's getting our clock, our uh, system's clock, in the form of a long. And then we do the exact opposite for the release key. It's false. And I might as well print a message saying failed or something. Then one for send, but you don't really need to do that. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you liked the video. I'm not quite sure how to end this one, so I'm going to read off the description. The next video is going to be about using simple mail transfer protocol to send the data. Subscribe, like, maybe I'll play some music. It is a conclusion. That's it.